So our second axis or our other axis of processing sound is the amplitude axis. So we have frequency and now amplitude is essentially the other way where we are making things louder or quieter. Not so much within a certain frequency, but overall, we're turning something up or down. But we're turning something up or down over time with a compressor. As the way my mentor, Eric Schilling, likes to say, it gives the instrument an attitude adjustment. It really brings out its personality. You can bring out the attack of a note, you can add sustain, you can really change its approach and feel in a track by altering and reshaping its envelope with a compressor. So now let's take a look at how we're using our compressor. First of all, let's address the question of EQ before or after compressor. You'll notice that I'm doing the EQ first in my signal flow and then I'm compressing. I do that intentionally because I would like my compressor to, if I've boosted or cut certain frequencies, that will alter the dynamics of the the instrument, whatever the instrument is, in this case the voice, so I want my compressor to be after the EQ. I feel I get a smoother compression when I compress after EQ. That's not to say you must always compress after EQing. I do both, but I'm explaining that in this case I'm doing it because it gives me a smoother result of compression on the voice when I compress after EQ. Now, our compressor has a number of parameters that we talked about before. Our ratio, our threshold, these two parameters work in a way to set the amount of overall compression. The higher this number is, if I went up like this, that would be more aggressive compression. The lower the number is, the smoother or mm, easier the compression is. So I'm using a fairly low ratio, 1.8 to 1. So that creates a fairly transparent type of compression. Um, I'm also using a very soft knee, so it, the compressor does not kick in very quickly or very abruptly. I have the attack set fairly uh, quickly, but this knee being so soft over here will mean that the compression will not kick in super aggressively on each syllable. My release is set at about 175 milliseconds, um, which allows the compressor to recover after each syllable. And because I'm compressing an awful lot, lead vocals can normally be compressed 8 to 10 dB. In this case, I'm compressing approximately 9 dB. I have my makeup gain set to about 9 dB. Let's take a listen to our voice without some compression, and then immediately after, we'll listen to it with compression. you will have noticed that the voice is now very consistent. Each syllable is at almost the exact same level. We're also got a little bit of clipping going on here that I didn't notice before, but it's not sounding bad, so I'm not too worried about it. Um, we actually have one more comp dynamic processor here that we didn't discuss, but it's a de -esser. And because we're adding brightness with the EQ, the de -esser will take away some of those bright S's. So let's go ahead and put that in as well and hear the results of that. You notice that as it was doing an S or a TH type of sound, the de -esser was lowering only at that moment, making sure that those syllables or those moments of syllables actually would not be too bright. So that's how we can use a compressor to bring control over the voice and again, help us connect the audience uh, to the vocal. We've got a lot of other videos, so check them out on our website, sae.edu.